and yeah. who is going to do something about set design for us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so I've been on the show for a while, even though I haven't been the co-host until yes. just recently. I do cameras and phone calls and whatever, whatever's whatever been on. And, and you know, sometimes when we're having the show, we have these two pretty tacky-looking um, <laughs> fish, <Hey>. you know. <laughs> We've got an evolved fish and a Jesus-free fish, and, and there's some debate about whether or not we like those. So when we decide we don't like those, we put this up. Here, guys. We can try and zoom in on, <laughs> on our variable I want to talk back about of the phone this part. today. I don't like this. This makes me mad. Okay? <laughs> so we're going to talk about this. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to not put this up here. Instead, we're going to have this pretty little sticker called Think, which is very appropriate for an atheist show, even though it's a Christian sticker. Yes. <laughs> I don't understand why. And I really like this one. I like skepticism as a virtue. I think that's a good sticker for us to have on the show. Anyway, I want to talk about the American flag a little bit. The American flag makes me mad. First of all, if we are an atheist show and we're talking about, you know, lack of religion, I don't think we necessarily have any place having an American flag on the show in the first place, except that we want to tell our audience, hey, we're Americans too, we love America too, even though we don't love God, right? Okay. Right? Which is a valid point. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps not. I suppose. <laughs> well. But I, I don't like... I'm not. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go live on the air, and I'm gonna have to say that I'm not very patriotic. Okay. And by that, I don't mean I. I hate our country, and I don't mean that I'm a terrorist. I'm gonna blow anything up. Okay. <laughs> I just want to let you guys know that right now. I'm a tree hugging, animal loving pacifist. So, <clears throat> but in my mind, patriotism serves the same function that we frequently say that. Um, religion serves and that is to segregate people out from other people and to say that if you're not with us we're against us and if you don't follow our ways you're wrong and we hate you um, um, it's uh, it's um, I, I mean I mean Al Franken on his new show just just said something along the lines of you know the conservatives believe that you should love our country the way that um, the way that children love their parents they're right, they can do no wrong, they're wonderful people. You okay. know, we do whatever they say. Liberals believe, uh, Al Franken said, yeah. that, that, um, that, we, that, that Americans should love our country the way adults love each other. And that is, I love you because you're good, and if you do something wrong, I'm going to help you figure out how to straighten right. that out. Okay. You know, I'm going to work with you to make it better. Okay. okay, we don't blindly love our country no matter what they do. And, and I think that I, I'm very, very proud to live in America for a lot of reasons. For example, that I can say I'm not patriotic on live television and I don't like our president. <laughs> okay, um, this is my personal view, okay? I'm not saying that the view of the yes. ACA is we don't like our president, but um, <clears throat> I don't like our president. And I can say that on live television. And I think that's very progressive and that's something we should really, really love about our country. But <laughs> there's a lot of countries that have a lot of good stuff to say that Americans can't really say. For example, you know, we're not the country with the lowest amount of death by gun violence. I think that would belong to like Canada. And we're not the country with the lowest unemployment rate. <coughs> Um, that would probably belong to, I don't know, China or Japan or India. And we're not the country with the best health care system. That would probably belong to Switzerland or France. And, of course, if anybody wants to look up these statistics and call in and let us know, feel free. We love to have facts. And I would have brought them in ahead of time, but I didn't really find anything when I looked. So, um, we, you know, we're a good country, and we have a lot of good stuff to say, but... I think that that patriotism functions to blind us from working with other countries to get good ideas from other people about, you know, different ways that we could, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. The, the Made in America sticker means it's better than anything else. But it's usually a closed-minded kind of thing, as in, yeah. you know, we're not picking and choosing the best things, as in, you know, other countries may have the best uh, system of doing this. Germany makes better cars. Sorry to say it, they do. <laughs> <laughs> so, made in America on a car may not be the best thing in the world. Um, it's it's patriotic, but that doesn't necessarily make it make it 
by definition, a good thing. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, and it's not, you know, I, uh, I don't have my dictionary on me. I should have brought it. But, it, you know, patriotism and nationalism in general. I'm not saying that I don't think America has it all together. I'm saying that patriotism and nationalism don't have a good function. The only function they serve is to give us another reason to hate other people. Okay. We're better than you, and if you're not with us, you're against us. I don't agree with that. I think that's something, I think that's one of the main functions that religion serves. And I think that in many ways, politics becomes a religion for a lot of people. Mm. And I think that it functions in the same way. Yeah. They're both very dis divisive issues. Mm -hmm. As in, people typically are going to have an opinion on religion and politics. I, you're always told by family strong, members. Strong, strong opinion. Exactly. You're told by your parents, these are the two things that you don't discuss in polite society. Because <laughs> they're going to tick people off. Um, and, and that's why we're here. Exactly. That's usually <laughs> what we end up doing is trying to poke our fingers in something that's a little bit sensitive to see what happens. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and this show is typically about religion. And uh, we're not here necessarily to change any minds or tell you that you're wrong or anything like that. It's just to give a different opinion, a different outlet, a different, a different set of ideas to challenge the status quo and just shake it up a little bit and see how strongly held those beliefs are and, and what they're doing, essentially. Um, we don't expect people to agree with us. I certainly don't. Most of our callers don't agree with us um, to a large extent, and that's fine. Um, as long as they look at the beliefs that they do have, critically evaluate them, if they go away you know, believing stronger in what they believed before, then I'm perfectly fine with that. They've thought about it critically, and they have come to a conclusion based on what they know of the world. That's a good thing. That's a great thing, getting people to think. If they've thought about it critically. Exactly, exactly. But, you know, okay, and, and, here, and here I'm going to reintroduce this little flag thing here. Okay, we've got our Pledge of Allegiance that we say every morning <coughs> in our classrooms. Like good patriotic little children who have absolutely no idea what it is we're yes. saying. Yes, yes. Take out the under God part, and I still don't agree with the pledge. I still don't like the pledge. You're making okay. a bunch of little children stand up and repeat something that they've memorized, that they have no idea what it says, what they're saying, what they're talking about. Yeah. Every morning, it's a form of brainwashing. It's, it's, a, it's a very... Mm, yeah. And, and even, if, even if we reworded worded the pledge, I saw a very good pledge that I really, really liked. Um, I mean, even if we took out the undergrad part, I don't think we should require our children to stand up every morning and pledge our allegiance to a flag, okay? I don't want to pledge my allegiance to a flag. Let's pretend for a moment that I'm not an atheist and this is a largely Judeo-Christian country. One of, as far as I know, the first ten commandments um, that both Christians and Jews are supposed to pay attention to is Thou shalt not worship idols. Okay. Graven images and such. Graven images. <laughs> <laughs> American flags, okay? <laughs> Great big monuments <coughs> in public courthouses that have the ten, ten Commandments carved into them. I mean, we do an awful lot of idol worship for a Christian nation, mm. which I don't believe we're a Christian nation, but there's a lot of people that would like to say that we are. But is that act actually worshiping the, I the idol, though? in terms of the flag or the monument or anything like that. If we that. stand up every morning and we pledge our allegiance to a flag? Well, again, that's the wording, but mm -hmm. in actuality, so, what it, I'm assuming, we take out the what I take it to be <laughs> is that what you're doing is pledging to the country, to the support Which, of the country. Which, a bunch of little six-year-olds don't know enough right. about politics and they don't know enough yes. about our country to know why they should be pledging their allegiance exactly. to their, our country, except that they happen to have been born here. Exactly. Now, I, I read a very, very good alternate version of the pledge that somebody was suggesting. It came, it was, somebody emailed it on our email list a little while ago, and it was very, I really, really liked it. And after reading this version, I said, I would stand up in class in high school when I was old enough to understand what I was saying, and I would proudly say that. See, for me, I didn't even learn the pledge until about seventh grade. Okay. Halfway through seventh grade, I stopped saying the under God part. By eighth grade, I stopped saying the pledge, and by ninth grade, I stopped standing for it. Okay, but this one that they send out over the, over the internet, if anybody can find it and read it to us, I haven't been able to find it, it again, but it was like, I pledge allegiance to the, to the, to the, um, 
Declaration of Indep Independence and and okay. the Constitution of America and to the okay. you know okay. justice a little, to, a little to bit the more liberty of this, for you know yeah, what this country is actually founded on yeah so. you know without our country is not founded on hatred and and belief in God I'd like to think. Um, <laughs> which would be why they came here and felt the need to have a new country because they were dealing with all this religious oppression where they came yeah. from. So they came here to get away from that. Yeah. Okay? But, um, um, okay, so in our schools, you know, children, little children who have no idea what they're saying are made to stand up every morning and say the, con the Pledge of Allegiance. And then they have to get up, and they have to stay standing, and they have to say, I pledge allegiance to Texas. Yeah, it's the Texas well, pledge, stupid. which I which is only about four lines. I don't know exactly what it is. I don't. I don't even I think, think it's, it's four, four lines. I thought yeah, it was I just I pledge it. allegiance to Texas. No, it's that's it's what a bit I've more heard. Than that. And but then they have to follow it by a moment of silence. Yeah. Now, in my opinion, that would be like ten minutes out of our children's day that they could be like learning something. Hmm. Novel concept: Send our children to school to learn yeah. something, rather yeah. than send our children to school to become brainwashed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that was the main issue that I had once this whole pledge case came up. It's the under God is a detail, and it is it is a part of it. Um, mostly, I just have issues with blindly doing anything like that. And again, the pledge the the children typically don't understand it. Um, they don't have a good grounding in, you know, what's actually being said. It's just these string of random words that you get up and you do this and then you ba da 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 ba da da ba da da and then you're done. Um, it's, it's just, it's a break up in the day and it's just basically, it, it's not really understood. They're, they don't know exactly what it is that's being said. And I don't agree that something like that should be happening, you know, be it religious, patriotic, or, or, or anything for that matter. Um, again, once high school kids who have a little bit more understanding of this country, what it's founded on, stuff like that, if they want to pledge, I don't have a big problem with that. Once they understand what it is that's being said. But to require something like that is, Honestly, is ridiculous. Uh, if they want to say the Pledge of Allegiance, <coughs> if they want to pledge their allegiance to our country, they should Yes. Stand up in their bedroom when they're doing their morning Christian prayers and say it. They, it shouldn't have anything to do with starting your day at school. Yeah. I don't understand. Okay, I don't understand the point of going into school every morning and pledging your allegiance to the country. Obviously, you live here. Obviously, you're growing up here. Obviously, you're going to eventually learn about politics. You're going to, yeah. you know, you, you're probably going to become proud through your history classes of the country that we live in, the history we've come through. That doesn't mean that we need to stand up and say a pledge in order to prove it. Yeah. Okay. Now my mom, my mom was telling me the other day that she was in school when they when they added in the under God part, okay. and they when they were teaching it, you know, she, she was used to saying it without the under God part. And when they were teaching it, they were just very very careful to teach you that you don't say I pledge allegiance no uh, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. They, you had to string those two together. One nation under God. It wasn't one no, nation it's not under a God. Separate statement. It was one nation under God. And they were very, very, very careful about wow. teaching that. They don't do that anymore. Wow. Now That's people say one nation under, under God. God. Indivisible. <laughs> she said they really, really ragged on them for, <laughs> for doing wow. it like that. That's interesting. <laughs> I thought that was really interesting. But then again, when that was actually put in, that was the whole point of it. Um, now, now there is no point. <laughs> well, it's it's not as stressed as much nowadays. But again, talking about the pledge case, they had um, some quotes and papers of what was written when it was actually put in in '54, and it was with the knowledge of the government that kids were being expected and required to recite this at the beginning of every day, and basically saying, you know, look, we have to differentiate ourselves from the atheistic, you know, commies. That's exactly the point of putting under God in there. That was, that was the entire point of it. And they knew that kids were being required to say this. And so it was with the intent that every day we're going to make the kids stand up and pledge that this is a nation under God. And it, it was not just a, you know, a hollow words of ceremonial deism or something like that. It was very, very specific what they're talking about. 
Um, and now they're trying to argue that it doesn't really mean anything anymore. Um, it, it certainly meant something when they put it in. So, so yeah, that's that could go. <laughs> but we're not a we're not a nation under God. We're a nation free from religious oppression, theoretically. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to take this little flag that we like to put up here, and I'm going to take it and I'm gonna throw it over there. <laughs> <laughs> and it may be up next week. <laughs> And of course, you know, I'd like to just mention again, this is not a political show, we're not a political yes. group. We're, we're, in, we're a religious group, but it, it just seems to me like nationalism most often serves well, the same function that religion serves. Exactly. And it's something for people to subscribe blindly to, and it's something for people to use to segregate themselves out from other people, and to use it as an excuse to hate yeah. other people. Yeah. It, it used to be that, you know, we are Americans, we're, we're so much better than all the Ruskies, um, and religion does the same thing. We're Christians, we're so much better than all the whatever our other whatever faith we else decide you to are. put in there. Um, you know, and I mean, even if you just take it back to religion, I'm an atheist, but I believe that every religion has something good to offer. I mean, there's some reason that <coughs> each religion decided to sit down and create a set of laws about how you get along in the world. And and I believe that that a lot of people don't use religion the way it was intended to be used, or, or they don't they don't look for the good in a religion. They use religion as an excuse to hate other people. Yeah. But it's the same with nationalism. I believe that every country has something good to offer. Yes. Yeah. You know. And it would be nice if you know required courses in high school now required you to travel overseas for a time. It would be nice if, you know... Yeah, that would be interesting. Because, again, that, you know, people... You, usually the people who are most vehemently agreeable to something, as in, you know, America rocks, this nation rules, um, are the people who've never been outside of it. Uh, the people who are most strongly saying that, you know, Christianity is perfectly right, it's got everything, you know, we answer all your questions, are the ones who've never actually looked at any other religions to any, to any great extent. Who pledged their allegiance to Texas are the ones who have never left Texas. <laughs> so, yeah. um, uh -huh. And so it, w it would be nice, you know, if, again, you know, more people traveled. Now, unfortunately, it's a very big country, so it's very difficult to do that. And you can't require somebody to do something that you're not, not. going to fund. So if of you're going to require not. an yeah. exchange student program, which I think would be brilliant, yes. you can have to fund it, too. Yeah, um, which would get vastly expensive. But, yeah, right. <laughs> um, but, but um, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I, I, was, I was talking with you before about uh, immigration and working yes. in other countries a yeah. little bit. Um, no. I don't remember how that came into play. <laughs> yeah, typically, typically, from what I've seen, just like say, immigration laws again, they're, they're very strict in the U.S. Mostly because a lot of people are trying to get into the country because it's this image of, you know, in history, it's it's the land of gold. There are oh. so many opportunities and stuff in the states. Yeah. So. Um, I and, don't and know, except that they're taking all over countries and they're sending them to other countries <coughs> because other countries will do them for cheaper. Yeah, yeah. You know, so now we don't have all those opportunities here. You have to go somewhere else. And honestly, okay, I remember why I said it. It was because a lot of times when I tell people I'm not patriotic, I'm not a nationalist. I believe our country is good, but I believe a lot of other countries are good too. And to be perfectly honest, I would love to go spend some time in those other countries. Yeah. And people say, well, if you don't like the way we're doing it, then just move. I'm like, yeah. well, I would if it were that simple. Yeah. But it's not that simple. First of all, if I were going to pick up and move somewhere, I'd have to get visas. I'd have to learn another language. Um, I'd have to jump through a whole bunch of red tape and, and um, um, I've I've heard you know my sister-in-law has a has a sister who married a man who lived in Germany so she picked up and moved to Germany for like a year and then she came back here and she's been having a real hard time of yeah. coming back getting back into the system finding a job nobody seems to want to hire her because she picked up and moved to Germany for a year yeah. I would really think that it'd be very valuable experience for a lot of Americans to just be able to just pick up and move to another country for a while, yeah. you know? Yeah. But it's not that easy. And a lot of Americans are afraid to leave our country because we know how much red tape we create for people to come in here. And we're afraid it's going to be that difficult if we go anywhere else and if we try and come back. Yeah. Yeah. But again, it's like that for pretty much any country. Any country any country is typically going to promote itself as being the center and the best country in the world. Um, again, I mean, I've seen that. I've lived in England and Norway. 
and both those countries are very nationalistic. Um, it, it, it's very much the opinion that, you know, this is Norway. We have everything that you could possibly want here. It's the safest country in the world. Um, and so why would you possibly want to go to America where they have shootings every other day, you know, on every single street corner, somebody's getting shot every 20 minutes. How could you possibly want to go live somewhere like that? Um, well, America's got some good things to it. So does Norway. Um, so does England. So does every other country out there. It's got some good to it. You know. um,